I've already been to the reason people should go to many to to the Hollywood Fringe Festival. I've already been to a bunch of plays and it's amazing the perspectives, the different the different um, genres and the perspectives that you that you get and the things that you learn from these shows um, and, and the way the artists pour their heart out and the amazing art that's created at the Hollywood Fringe Festival. I'm, I'm never disappointed. Even if it's, if, even if I see a show that I'm like, well, you know, I normally wouldn't see that kind of show, you know, I wasn't, you know, it's this way, eh, you know, it's not, even those shows, I find that there's something in there that is so um, profound and beautiful that I can take away. Um, I've never seen a show that I thought was like, oh, geez, this is crappy. <laughs> you know, I always feel like artists that come to the Hollywood Fringe Festival have something to say. You know, they are um, really passionate about what they do and they um, and they 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 are generous. And and I've actually had a lot of artists come to my shows, too. Um, I go to their shows, they, they go to my show, and there's a real camaraderie there that I've actually never seen anywhere else. Uh, this is a really unique festival in that way. And um, so I, I really think that, yeah, people should see as many shows as possible because you just don't know what you're going to learn I, and, and what kind of perspectives you're going to um, uh, come across. and. Um, and, and, and also as an artist, it's inspiring for me to see all these shows, like, um, and get ideas for myself, you know, for my future, you know, the shows that I want to, uh, produce in the future. Um, so I think this is probably why, um, in my opinion, uh, people should go and, and see as many shows as possible. It's just such a, um, creative creative environment, um, creative group of artists that come together and produce really interesting, thought provoking, um, smart, fun, funny works. I mean, why wouldn't you want to go and see as many plays as possible? I mean, it, they're all so unique and different. As I said, I, I've never seen a show, especially this year, I haven't seen one that I was like, oh, this is mediocre. I thought everything kind of had something brilliant in it even if it wasn't my type of show even i mean what is that anyway but like even if it's not a show that i would necessarily watch um uh but but yeah i mean i think it's it's worth going to as many shows plus you know they're not as expensive as the as the amundsen <laughs> you know like you're not gonna pay an arm and a leg to see these shows which is again another great thing about a fringe is that it's um that uh, it's affordable, you know, the, every, everybody can go see it. Um, so why not go to as many as possible? If it's like 10 bucks um, or 1250, um, you know, you can do, you can do a bunch of shows. You can binge all these shows um, and, and get like a real sense of like what artists are feeling and like what they're creating and, and what they're seeing and you know, how they're interpreting what's happening in the world. I mean, so important for the community. Hi, I'm Aza Safo, and um, if you want to know more about my play, I Heart Maroc, uh, then uh, watch this video. The idea, well, the idea came from my actual experiences. So this is inspired by my time in the Peace Corps. Um, I served in the Peace Corps from 2006 to 2008. Um, this was during the Bush era. Um, and I mentioned that in my, in my play, though that's not the main focus of my play. There are a lot of, my focus of, of my play is about my relationships with the people and how I eventually was accepted into this community. I was a, I was, I was an outsider. People thought I was in the CIA, <laughs> you know, like all these wild things that people thought about me and, and, um, they were just, you know, they judged me, I judged them, but eventually, you know, what happened was. Um, I became a part of this community and these amazing people who eventually considered me as, as one of them. My host sister, my host mother, uh, my best friend. I even, I even had like a romance, you know. 
somewhat romance with with one of the the, the local Mor Moroccan men in my village. You know, so it was just I. That, I mean, that's where the idea came from. I, I I'd been wanting to write. I'd actually been wanting to write this play for a long time, um, and I'd explored other ways of doing it. Um, at first, I actually wanted to make a film. Um, and at the time when I wanted to make a film about this experience, it was it was it was a few years ago. Um, and I still I didn't have like the skill set <laughs> as a writer to really um, kind of develop the ideas. And it didn't really come together for me. But in general, I didn't it didn't feel like it was a it was a movie um, at, at the time. Um, and so I kind of gave up on that idea. But then it came back again, it manifested itself again as like a multi actor play. And I kind of sat to write, sat down to write that. And then for whatever reason, it just didn't work out. Um, again, it didn't feel right. But last year when I, as I said, when I uh, first came up with those, those lines, uh, Bonjour, Salam, I'm Fatima, what's your name? you know, the Fatima, my host mother, um, I was like, oh, this is a solo play. This is exactly what it, it has to be. And, and it just came together naturally as a solo play. Um, you know, I myself, I'm a character actor. So that's kind of where my strengths are. Um, and so I play on my strengths, right? Um, I knowing that I'm a character actor, and that's what I love to do anyway different voices, different stances, and um, different um, way of t uh, walking and talking. You know, I mean, that's something that I find a lot of joy in doing is creating different types of characters to, to embody on stage. So this really played well to that as well. The reason I had to do it was because it's something I've, it's a story I've wanted to tell for so long. And I felt like finally I could tell the story the way I want to tell this story and I can do justice to it. The, the story itself is about uh, my time in the Peace Corps. So when we first start out, it's like the, the exposition, right? The exposition where I talk about um, my life's purpose, wanting to search, wanting to find my life's purpose. And, you know, I think it's a, it's a story that we all kind of connect to, right? Everybody's looking for their life's purpose. What what am I going to do with my life? How am I going to how am I going to make an impact? Um, and that's just uh, from very early on uh, all the different times and that I've that I've thought about what is my life's purpose? And, and we get to um, a conversation that I have with a, a Peace Corps recruiter. Oh, no, uh, we get to a conversation I have with one of my employers. And he says, well, um, you know, you and he asks, you know, what do you want to do with your life? Um, you're you're a young kid. You know, where do you see yourself in, in, in the future? And I say, well, you know, I want I want adventure. I want to do something inter international while well, I've been volunteering for Human Rights Watch. And he goes, wait, well, volunteering, you know, vo have you thought of the Peace Corps? you know, volunteering. Peace Corps is technically a volunteer position, but it's actually a job um, and a very difficult job at that. Um, and so I say, oh, and that's where the light bulb goes off. <laughs> I decide to meet up with a Peace Corps recruiter. And then and then and then I, I think to myself, oh, this is great. This is exactly what I want to be doing. And perhaps I'll find my life's purpose in in the Peace Corps. And so I go off to the Peace Corps to find my life's purpose. And uh, my tagline is one woman's quest to find her life's purpose in Morocco. I think more than anything, I want the audience to this. Well, this is I, I call it I Heart Morocco for a few reasons. I want people to see the show to see why I specifically call it I Heart Morocco. But really, um, actually, one of my um, friends uh, who saw my play said this to me afterwards, that this is my love letter to Morocco. And, and it is, you know, and in essence, this is a, a, a love letter to Morocco and, and the people. So I hope what people will get out of it is that, is um, just how much um, 
you know, what great, what a great community I lived in and how much, um, how much we, uh, we connected. Um, and I hope people will um, enjoy the jokes. <laughs> I hope people will enjoy the stories and they'll find that, um, they'll find it um, heartwarming and endearing. And I hope that, you know, and I know a lot of shows tend to be really dark, especially nowadays with, the, with COVID-19, a lot of people are like in this like very dark headspace, right? Um, because of all that's happened in the world, but I hope it'll be a chance for the audience to just kind of sit back and feel some joy, to kind of get some joy out of theater um, and to come away with it, um, maybe a little more lighthearted. Um, the show itself, I hope is for the most part lighthearted. There are definitely elements, like some dramatic elements to it, um, but, uh, I really hope that that's really how people come away from my show, that when they leave, that they do feel like they've been transported and they went on a journey and that they want to find out more about the people. And maybe they want to, and maybe not just Morocco, but maybe some people will be convinced that once the pandemic is over, <laughs> that they'll want to, um, that they'll want to travel more, that they'll want to experience more cultures. Um, I feel like we live in a society where um, people are so close minded nowadays, where they don't want to know about others, that they live in their insular worlds. And um, I want people to feel maybe the need or the, um, oh, what's the word for it? Um, yeah, me, okay, that, that, that. The, for people to feel the need to, to start looking outside of themselves, looking outside of their, their own world and seeing what's out there, the possibilities, and maybe to, to visit other uh, countries and to learn more about other cultures. I mean, I know in Los Angeles, we do have, oh, it's, 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 such a, it's such a melting pot of, of communities and cultures and so beautiful. And I love that we live in Los Angeles for that reason. But I hope that um, that is the takeaway that people will um, want to do, to will be more curious about other cultures, will want to explore some more, um, especially Morocco. I hope you will all go to Morocco after, <laughs> afterwards and you will seek out my community. No, I'm kidding. Um, don't bombard those people, please. People should go to my play. Um, I would, I would argue that um, you should, or you, I mean, I don't like to use the word should, but I hope that if you are compelled to go to my play um, because you want to smile, you want to laugh and you want to have a good time, but you also want to uh, learn a little bit about Morocco and, and the people there and oh, what was it like? And you're kind of uh, curious about um, what an American being plopped in the middle of <laughs> uh, the desert in the south of Morocco, living in a little village with a bunch of, without knowing the language or the culture, what that's like. If you're curious about that, then I hope you'll come and see my play. Um, I think I do a really good job with my synopsis in explaining, you know, exactly what my, you know, what kind of things you're going to see in my play, what kind of scenarios and what kind of experiences that I had that I'm going to be talking about. So um, I encourage people to read my synopsis and and hopefully, uh, you know, if that sparks an interest and and you want to come see my play, I would absolutely love that. And I want more people. Um, to laugh and to be happy and to be joyous. And, and, I, and I hope that is um, what you get out of my play. So if that's what you want, um, <laughs> I hope you come to see my play. So I've already done my preview, but what I'm looking forward to in um, my performances, I have a couple of performances coming up, so I hope that this will continue to happen, is like, is the audience, the audience reactions you know, as a playwright, I get so much, so excited and so much joy from hearing people laugh 
at that joke that I wasn't sure if it was going to work and and just and and being and, and knowing that it worked and and people found it funny or people loved the characters and and it really um, it was something that was touching for them and and they're still talking about it the next day as I said when my friend and, and her husband and her son at the at the dinner table I, and that's what I'm looking forward to I'm hoping that there's more of that and and it's just so electric being um, on stage and having that audience feedback uh, that's initially why I fell in love with theater because there's there's no other you can't get that from a camera <laughs> you know you can't really get that uh, excitement that magic that electricity that comes from um, being in front of an audience and the two and, and playing it's almost like a dance <laughs> that sounds a little cheesy <laughs> but it's almost like a dance right um, so you that is what I'm most looking forward to and I, I, I experienced that in my first in my preview and I and I hope the the other two uh, performances are uh, people enjoy it as much and I have wonderful spontaneous moments those are my favorite the the greatest thing that I love about um, about live theater is the spontaneous moments and I had a few of those uh, during my preview and oh gosh it's it's the best feeling what I hope is um, that uh, after after I finish the, the the Fringe Festival, that I can take uh, my solo play I Heart Maroc to other festivals, that I can showcase it at other festivals, and um, that's my hope for it, and that I will revisit, um, and I can kind of you know with feedback and 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 see you know from my experiences maybe kind of uh, do some more revisions and uh and take it to different festivals i'm really excited about this play I, I i i've been working on it for a whole year and it's been a lot of blood sweat and tears and i feel really proud of what i've what i've what i've put together and so far i have absolutely loved the interactions i've had with the audience and the feedback i've gotten so uh yeah i mean that's my hope really that people will, will show up uh, and you know uh, other artists uh, will show up and, and I will go support them as well and that I will take my play to other festivals and and it will the story will be seen by others and that's really my hope I just want this story to be told and to be experienced if you've enjoyed this conversation about I heart Maroc at uh, the Hollywood Fringe Festival uh, come out and um, and spend some time with me and my Moroccan friends. Uh, it, those performances will also be live streamed, so feel free to either come out in person or watch it uh, watch it on live stream. Looking forward to seeing you at at my show.